Notre Dame's next two recruiting classes currently rank in the top 10. 23 commits in that 2024 class. Nine of those four stars led by quarterback C.J. Carr and three commits in 2025 with an average rating of 91.9. So let's learn a bit more about some of Marcus Freeman's prospects with Tom Loy of Irish Illustrated joining us now. Tom Loy, you are pulling double duty. You were with us in studio yesterday previewing this big Ohio State game. Now let's talk a bit more about recruiting. All the stars are coming out for this one, including on the sideline. Top prospects from the current class and future ones will be in attendance. Who do you have on commit watch this weekend? Yeah, this, I was kind of going back and forth about this all week long as to who's ready to pull the trigger. But, you know, let's focus on the 24 class. Guy know. I know Blair knows really well. Davis Andrews, safety at a, at a Utah in the 24 class. He's kind of looking at Utah, BYU, Notre Dame. Um, this is a guy that's going to go on a mission trip, so he's really part of the 26 class, but officially, you know, 24. So we got to keep an eye on him. Another is Daniel Anderson, a running back at a Arkansas in the class of 2025. Really, really good player. That it was funny because Notre Dame was actually first to jump in. Uh, technically, I think it was Long Island had an offer. And then he camped, and Notre Dame was so impressed they jumped in with an offer. So it was pretty, pretty kind of. It was neat to see how his uh, his process has played out. But I think Notre Dame is the team to beat at this point, and it would not shock me in the slightest if uh, come Saturday, Sunday, or maybe even Monday, uh, if he pulls the trigger and picks the Irish. And and that would actually be the second running back in the class for Notre Dame in 25. So Dylan McCullough is doing his job at a high level. Uh, another one I'm watching is Ethan Long, a safety out of Connecticut. Uh, another another good player that camped at Notre Dame right in front of them, and, and they've been pushing hard ever since the summer. Um, long, athletic, rangy kid, can play corner, can play safety, uh, can even play some receiver if he wanted to. I mean, he's a really talented athlete um, with a lot of upside. So he's another guy in the 25 class that I like Notre Dame to land. I have a crystal ball on him. Uh, I think a couple others as well. If Steve Wolfong doesn't yet, I'm sure he's going to in the near future. Um, and then the last one I want to mention is, is a name that you guys probably know pretty well, Jerome Bettis. Junior, um, a wide receiver, a wide receiver out of Georgia in the 25 class. Um, this is a kid that's like Chancey Stuckey, the receivers coach, really recruited him hard. Jared Parker, the offensive coordinator, pushed for him. But this was Marcus Freeman's guy from day one. He was he was making it a point to personally recruit him, and uh, they want to see that Bettis legacy continue in South Bend. So Notre Dame's doing a really good job there, and he's taken so many trips to South Bend. Um, USC and you know Tennessee there's a couple of schools that are really recruiting at a high level um, USC has an offer and he was talking about going out there but to be completely honest if this weekend comes and goes and he ends up committing at this point shutting down his process it wouldn't shock me in the slightest the Irish head into the weekend on a bit of a recruiting heater Tom they obviously landed 2025 quarterback Deuce Knight earlier this week Derby Lambert, the four-star offensive lineman, joined the, the fold as well. When you think about Lambert and how he could fit into uh, offensive line coach Joe Rudolph's line room, uh, how do you see him fitting in there? Yeah, I mean, this was the exact final perfect piece that they wanted to add to the class. You know, he's 6'6", 280-ish pounds at a Catholic memorial in Massachusetts. Uh, last cycle, they landed Bubakar Treor, a defensive end, edge rusher out of the same high school. And it's funny, their recruitments played out very similar. Not a lot of visits, not a lot of noise, not a lot of interviews, especially when you're talking about Gerby Lambert. But, um, and then there was a late rush where is Boston College gonna land him? Notre Dame looked like the player for a while. I mean, these recruitments played out so similarly. And in the end, they played out the, the same when, when they both committed to Notre Dame. So tremendous pickup. He's got verified size. He's a, he's a monster. He's got elite wingspan. Um, strong, physical, he's a mauler, but he's got finesse and he's got good footwork and there's just a really lot, there's a lot to like about him, but he's far from a finished product, but he's going to fit in really well with that Notre Dame tradition along the offensive line. Everybody calls it O-line U and, um, you know, talking to sources inside the Goog at Notre Dame, they absolutely believe they landed a future first rounder in Lambert. Well, Blair mentioned Deuce Knight, the 2025 four-star quarterback committed on Monday, choosing the Irish over Tennessee, Auburn, Ole Miss, among other schools. Tom, how impactful is it to have the quarterback and the face of your class already committed? You know, it's it's a big deal because I, I talked to Deuce over the week, uh, or I mean, yesterday actually, and we went in pretty pretty in depth about his process and and uh, how it all played out. And, you know, just to tell a quick backstory is he was talking to director of recruiting, Chad Bowden at Notre Dame. And, and Chad told him like, hey, if you're not ready or if you're ready, just flip a coin, see what you want it to land on. 
And, um, you know, as the coin's in the air, um, he's saying to himself, like, I want it to land on heads because I want it to be Notre Dame. And that's when he knew, like, he wanted to be at Notre Dame. So it was a pretty cool moment. I wrote, wrote a full feature piece up at irishillustrated.com, so I recommend checking it out and, you know, seeing exactly what he said about it. But, you know, in that same conversation, he, is, he was adamant. Like, I'm going after Jamie French, the Alabama five-star commit. I'm going after Talon Taylor, Derek Meadows, J Jerome Bettis. Um, he's got his eye. I mean, and he was talking about guys on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, this guy is um, well educated by Marcus Freeman, Chad Bowden, and those guys as to who to go after. But, you know, not many guys look like him at 6'5, 200, verified 4'5, 40. Um, again, kind of like Lambert, far from a finished product, got to work on his footwork and some things like that. But, man, this dude looks like a million bucks and he's got such, you know, got great tools, uh, got great bones. And, and uh, Notre Dame is absolutely thrilled to have him following CJ Carr in the 24 class. Always important to have that committed quarterback on campus, on the sideline, recruiting other players before kickoff uh, this Saturday. Obviously, will be a huge one. Notre Dame sits in seventh in the composite team recruiting rankings right now. Tom, 23 commitments. A large portion of the uncommitted recruits uh, are going to be visiting this weekend are from the 2025 class. How would you describe the balance that this program has to do? to balance or kind of go through uh, between closing out 2024 and turning the page on 2025? Well, in 24, I know we kind of talked about it a little bit, but this weekend is all about Davis Andrews and trying to trying to get him locked in. They felt like they've been the leader for him for a long time, and they really want to solidify that. And Chris O'Leary, the safeties coach, really wants to get that done this weekend. So he's going to get a lot of their attention this weekend. But yeah, the, the, this weekend's going to be very much about 25 and getting guys locked in and kind of you know moving up the charts and the rankings for the 25 class and adding to that class but they're not done in 24 you know they don't they may not have another visitor on campus this weekend unless a there might be a mystery surprise recruit that's going to be on on campus on saturday that we've kind of hinted at at irish illustrated but we're not going to be dropping that name until saturday morning when we know for sure that he's there but he's committed to an sec program and uh you know as long as he steps on campus like I expect, um, I think he's going to be a guy that you need to watch as a potential flip. Uh, maybe not this weekend, but in the near future. Um, beyond that, they're still pushing for four-star tight end. Um, Carter Nelson may be the best tight end in America. He's committed in Nebraska. Um, they felt like they were leading for him when all of a sudden he shocked a lot of people and committed in Nebraska right after the visit. Still pushing for Justin Scott, the five-star defensive tackle committed to Ohio State, uh, right there in the backyard of Chicago. And they're pushing for Caleb Beasley, a Tennessee commit from Tennessee. I think he's going to be, I think he's less likely, but he's been very receptive to the staff. I think they just need to get him back on campus. But, you know, this weekend, like I said, it's about Andrews, but also the 25 class. But moving forward of that list that I just mentioned, keep an eye on Carter Nelson, because I think uh, Notre Dame is really climbing that leaderboard for him. This game will look a lot different than it did last year. Part of that is the Notre Dame offense, which now ranks top three nationally. And explosive rush plays and pass plays. They're averaging 46 points a game. That's good for ninth nationally. Tom, what's been the reaction from recruits after watching this new high-powered offense? I think uh, Sam Hartman might be, if he's not, he's one of the most popular guys in America, definitely among the, the Notre Dame fan base. I mean, they're the only thing they're bummed about is not going to have a, another year beyond this. But I think we all know Sam Hartman's pretty much done after this year. But uh, he's been special. It's been fun to watch. Uh, you know, he's everything that was as advertised heading into the season. Um, I was hyping him up and thankfully for me, um, it, it's worked out so far. Uh, but Jared Parker coming in as a first year offensive coordinator, you know, I remember writing a story and talking to some sources about him before the season and people were raving about him. They thought he was kind of a sleeper, a guy that never got a fair shot as an offensive coordinator um, at, at past spots. And uh, that's really coming to light, man. He, he's, he's having a really good season as a play caller. And uh, he's adjusting well as the games go on. So that's going to be very important. Um, but beyond that, like the cool thing about this offense at Notre Dame is all these guys are involved. So Gino Guduli, um, the quarterbacks coach, and, uh, you know, you have uh, obviously Jerry Parker's coach in tight ends, but you have Dylan McCullough, the running backs coach, and you have Chancey Stuckey, the receivers coach. All these guys are involved in the game plan. I and mean, it's not just one guy telling everybody this is what we're going to do because, you know, obviously, you know, Marcus Freeman's on the defensive side, you know, at heart, but even he's helping on offense. So I just like the camaraderie, how everybody's kind of coming together. And, um, you know, the future is really bright with this offense and everybody's very excited. But like I said, the best thing about it is everybody's on the same page, having fun, and it's showing with the results on the field. All right, Tom Loy with the latest from South Bend. Thanks for joining us. And for more Fighting Irish recruiting news and analysis, plus game day coverage, make sure you check out irishillustrated.com. Love that teaser that Tom dropped.
could be on Flip Watch this weekend. <laughs>